Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about one of the three main financial statements. As a reminder, the three statements are the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement. Today, we're going to talk about the second one, the balance sheet. The balance sheet represents a company's performance at a specific point in time. This differs from the income statement and cash flow statements, which both represent a company's performance over an entire period of time. Often that period is a quarter or an entire year. Now let's get into how to actually read a balance sheet. The first thing on a company's balance sheet are its assets. Assets are listed in the order of liquidity, that is, how quickly they can be converted into cash. There are two primary types of assets. There are current assets and non-current assets. Let's start with current assets. Current assets are those that can be expected or reasonably expected to be converted into cash within one year. Examples of current assets would be things like cash itself, any accounts receivable, and inventory. Now let's talk about non-current assets, which are those that are illiquid and cannot be expected to be converted into cash within one year's time. There are two types of non-current assets. The first one are tangible non-current assets. That's something like property, manufacturing plants, or equipment, often abbreviated to PP and E. The second type is intangible non-current assets. Examples of those would be something like a patent or goodwill. Goodwill is an intangible asset associated with the purchase of one company by another company. It can often be thought of as the difference between the price actually paid for a company and the fair value of the company's assets and liabilities. A good example of something like that would be a good name brand, which is often difficult to put a price on otherwise. While assets are listed at the top of a company's balance sheet, liabilities are listed towards the bottom of a company's balance sheet. Liabilities are the debts or obligations that a company owes, and they're listed in the order in which they're expected to be paid. Just like assets, there are both current and non-current liabilities. Current liabilities are those that can be expected to be paid within one year's time. Examples of those would be things like accrued expenses, such as a salary expense that's owed to employees but hasn't been paid yet. Another example would be something like accounts payable, that is, money owed to vendors that hasn't been paid for yet either. The other type of liability is a non-current liability. Non-current liabilities are those that cannot be expected to be paid within one year's time. An example of that would be something like a bond that a company has issued for cash, or something like a pension benefit owed to future or current retirees. While assets show up at the top of a company's balance sheet and liabilities towards the bottom of the balance sheet, at the very bottom of the balance sheet is the shareholder equity section. Shareholder equity can be thought of as the ownership of a company by its shareholders. Within this section, there are often line items for things like common stock, which is the proceeds from a sale of common stock, or retained earnings, which is net income earned in prior periods that could be paid out as a dividend in the future. The shareholder equity section can also be thought of as the book value or the net worth of a company. It's really important to realize that the shareholder equity section does not necessarily equal the value that public markets put on shareholder equity. What I mean by that is the shareholder equity section could value a company at $20 per share, for example, whereas a company's public stock could be at $100 per share. What this means is that public markets believe a company will continue to grow and continue to produce value in the future. Meanwhile, the shareholder equity section simply represents the amount of money each shareholder would get if a company completely closed its doors, sold all of its assets, and paid off all its debts. A critical part to the balance sheet is that it must actually always balance. We do this with the following equation. Assets equal liabilities plus shareholder equity. So how does this actually work? Let's go over an example. Let's say we're a retailer and we purchase $100 of inventory, but we only pay our vendor every 30 days. In this situation, our inventory on the asset side of the balance sheet would go up by $100 to represent the inventory we now have. But on the liability side of the balance sheet, we need to increase accounts payable by $100 to represent the money that we owe our vendor in 30 days time. Now let's say 30 days has passed and we must pay up. In this situation, we would lower cash on the asset side of the balance sheet by $100. On the liability side, we could also lower accounts payable by $100 since we have paid our vendors $100 in cash and no longer owe them any money. In this situation, the balance sheet always balances. As we just saw, the balance sheet contains really important information about the financial health of a company at a specific point in time. 
On Quantopian, this information can be accessed within the FactSet Fundamentals dataset. One way of using this dataset would be looking at the price to book ratio of a company and comparing that to the public stock price of a company. You could then look at that differential across all the companies in your investment universe and use that to inform a trading decision. If you're curious about any of the balance sheet items, please look at the balance sheet section within the FactSet Fundamentals data reference linked here on screen and in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and please subscribe to learn more.